The I-Team is digging into prices that you could end up paying if you have an emergency. If you need to dial 911, chances are you're probably not going to be thinking about how much an ambulance ride is going to cost you. But when it comes to the bill, millions of Americans every year are blindsided. And tonight, investigative reporter Brian New is looking at the loophole right now in federal law that allows this to happen and why tomorrow may be the start of the best chance to fix it. <laughs> When five-year-old June pretends to be at the hospital, it's good. Yes, it's good. easy for her mom to smile. But you gotta stand it out for a little bit longer. Oh, no. But when the situation was real, all of a sudden we heard kind of a crash from upstairs. Rachel Metzger oh, says really it was scary. Yeah, she like wasn't waking up. It was, yeah, it was really scary. June had fallen from a bedroom loft, hit her head, and was unconscious. The Metzgers immediately called 911. An ambulance rushed June five miles down the road to the hospital. There, she was diagnosed with a concussion. Doctors told her parents she would be okay. For the Metzgers, the stress of it all was over. So these are the bills. Or so they thought. When I saw that it was $1,000, I couldn't believe it. I thought The it Metzgers crazy. have health insurance, but Austin Travis County EMS does not have a contract with any private insurance company effectively meaning all of its ambulance services are billed out of network. For the Metzgers, that means they're on the hook for $1,082 for the five-mile ride to the hospital. And I assumed that once they ran things through insurance, then everything would be fine. Was it? Nope. <laughs> no, it was not. Every year, three million insured Americans are taken to the emergency room by an ambulance. Studies show about half of those patients end up with a surprise medical bill. In Texas, it happens even more often, 70% of the time. These out-of-network ground ambulance bills cost Americans $129 million a year. Circumstances like this that can set families back for years. Patricia Kelmar with the Public Interest Network has testified to Congress as a patient advocate. She says when lawmakers passed the 2020 No Surprises Act, it prevented hospitals and doctors from sending patients unexpected out-of-network bills. But the law doesn't require the same for ground ambulances. We really need to solve this. It's not fair if you're insured that there's a good chance you can't even go in network for an ambulance. Lawmakers said the ambulance industry was too complicated to include it in the law because while some ambulance rides are provided by private corporations, most are provided by local government agencies. In Dallas, it's Dallas Fire Rescue. In Fort Worth, it's MedStar. What would happen to ground ambulance services if they were included in these, in these bills? Matt Savasky of MedStar says if local government-run ambulance services could only collect what insurers are willing to pay, either local taxes would have to go up to make up the difference, or their services would have to go down. And I would argue that if the community wants to have an ambulance at their heart attack, at their car crash, at their baby not breathing, within seven minutes with a high degree of reliability, it costs a lot more than $500 to do that. Ambulance providers and insurance companies both say patients should not be stuck with surprise bills. But since the two sides can't agree on fair pay, it's patients who are paying. In my mind, they should work with insurance the same way that any other health care provider does. After unsuccessful attempts to negotiate, last month the Metzgers began making monthly payments on their ambulance bill. June will be nearly eight years old by the time they pay it off. It feels bad to feel like you're getting ripped off by these people who are supposed to be providing you life-saving services. A federal advisory committee on ground ambulance services, which was set up as part of that 2020 No Surprises Act, will meet for the very first time tomorrow. By law, this committee is tasked with coming up with solutions to end surprise bills on ambulance rides. Doug, this committee is made up of multiple government officials, multiple people in the ambulance, as well as the insurance industry, along with one consumer advocate and one patient advocate. And you mentioned that the committee is meeting for the first time, and that's going to happen tomorrow, but didn't federal law require that this committee get set up and into effect more than a year ago? Is that right? 
Yeah, it did, and that has been a point of frustration for some consumer advocates. By law, this committee has six months to come up with recommendations, but Doug, that clock doesn't start until they meet for the first time. The members of this committee were announced nearly 17 months ago. Now, we asked the Federal Department of Health why it's taken so long to get this first meeting. We have not been given an answer. At least we asked the question. Brian New, thank you so much. Insightful.